On May 20th, 2024, at 8.10 p.m. local time in Italy, a strong volcanic earthquake struck the densely populated Campi Flegres supervolcano. As buildings shook for the next 20 seconds, panicked people rushed to the streets who were attempting to escape falling debris. When this quake ended, it was revealed that several structures had small cracks in their walls with others having minor pieces of plaster fall off. What had just occurred was the Campi Flegri supervolcano's strongest earthquake in at least 40 years, which caused many people to become concerned that the volcano was truly reactivating. As it would be hard to not notice the volcano you live right next to when the ground rumbles in such a strong manner to cause this amount of damage. And yet, all is not as it seems because the earthquake which struck only had a magnitude of 4.4 and an MMI intensity rating of a 4, which suggests that no building damage of any kind should have occurred. So, why was the damage much more significant than the scientific models might initially suggest? The answer is seismic resonance. If you are a local who lives in the Naples or Pozzoli area, I encourage you to look around and count the average height of structures which are most common. By my count, I noted an average building height of 3 to 4 stories, so keep this figure in mind. Each building has a different resonance which causes damage to be amplified or lessened depending on the hertz frequency of the earthquake which strikes. Taller buildings are most sensitive to low frequency events, medium height buildings are most sensitive to medium frequency events, and shorter buildings are most sensitive to high frequency events. In the case of the magnitude 4.4 which struck, it seemingly had a frequency of between 1 and 2, with the highest peak being at 2 Hz. If we overlay this modified chart, you will note that the quake which struck should have most heavily affected buildings between 3 and 6 stories tall, with the highest peak being between 3 and 4 stories in height. It is buildings of this height where the most notable damage occurred, causing ground shaking, which should have been around 2.9% the force of gravity, to become 3.3 times more intense, causing damage to peak an intensity of MMI6 in these structures. And, what do you know, if you read the description for MMI 6 shaking, it lines up with the worst damage which was observed. Regardless, does this mean that Campi Flegri is in danger of producing an eruption anytime soon since the phrases magma at depth, seismic crisis, and seismic storm are being used in certain headlines? After all, I even noted in a video on May 4th that the Campi Flegri volcano has just produced a sudden spike in ground deformation. Well, it turns out that just like a similar episode of activity which occurred during September of 2023, this rapid increase in ground deformation was also short-lived, only lasting for 11 days between April 5th and April 16th. Since then, the rate of ground uplift caused by magma very slowly pooling in a lacolith-like sill at 3 km depth has decreased to 24 cm a year. Now, don't get me wrong, this is still a substantial amount, but it is a far cry from both the intensity of the seismic crisis in the 1980s which caused temporary evacuations, and the 3.7 meters of uplift which occurred before Campi Flegri's last eruption. Also, magma does not yet exist at shallow enough depths to directly trigger an eruption in my opinion. In the five-step cycle Campi Flegri seems to undergo, we are merely in step three, a period of heightened ground deformation where an eruption is highly unlikely. I would only be concerned about an eruption becoming possible if ground deformation for more than 12 months exceeded 2 meters a year, like last witnessed in 1537 to 1538, where some areas reportedly rose by as much as 9.1 meters or 30 feet a year. As for the earthquake which struck, it was technically volcanic but was caused by heated hydrothermal fluids aka largely water lubricating faults rather than the movement of magma. Such events of this magnitude are uncommon but can and do occur during periods of increased ground deformation.